Now, the reason why I have graphs in the middle of modern trigonometric graphs in the middle of all this is because what we looked at on Tuesday was a graph. So remember, right? We took some time, we looked at the unit circle, and we graphed a function. It was y equals sine x. Okay? Now, I'd like you to either, if you've got it nearby, uh, refer to that graph, or if you don't have it nearby, just draw it again. It's okay, it doesn't take long. You've got your axes here, and we went from naught to 360. Okay, that's the part of it that we drew. So, by the end of the lesson, we kind of got the shape. We got the shape, right? And that was kind of where we finished, so I want to know a few more things about this, okay? There's sine x. I'll just put a few important angles on here. There's 90, there's 180, right at halfway. Between 180 and 360, halfway between those is, what's the angle? 270, very good. Whoops. And right at the end where we chose to stop is 360, okay? So, a few things to note. The first thing is, it's a smooth curve. Okay, it's a smooth curve. In fact, that's, if you recall, that's what sine means. It means curved, okay? That's where it gets this shape from. That's where it gets its name from, rather. So it's a smooth curve. And um, if, like me, you, um, you started off drawing these, because I've drawn thousands of these, maybe tens of thousands, that's why mine looks so perfect. But when you begin, it's kind of hard to nail this shape. So you might be like trying to, trying to do something like this. You know, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I got there. Okay, ta-da, that's the basic shape. And that's not a bad place to start, but you can't finish there. This is not a curve. This is about 15 curves, okay? You need to present one. Maybe you want to do this lightly in pencil and then go through it firmly with a single line, okay? So it's a smooth curve. That's the first thing, and that's why there's an important name, okay? The second thing is uh, this curve, right? It goes back and forth. So at these particular spots at the top, and bottom, okay? You can notice it's a bit like, if you imagine like a, um, uh, a roller coaster, as it were, going up and down and up and down, right? At these spots here, right, it's neither going up nor down, right? It's not like, here's really, really steep, you're coming up. Right here, it's sort of like the, um, the roller coaster stops, right? It's not increasing in height, it's not rock rocketing down, it just kind of stops there. Right? Now we have a word for that, which you guys might, um, might have heard before, which is stationary. Right? Stationary means something is not moving. It stops, as it were. Okay? So this point up here, and this point down the bottom, right? also you're not going up, you're not going down, you just kind of stopped. We call them stationary points. Okay? Now this, I'm putting this in brackets because it's a, actually a really big important phrase that you will learn more about in two unit. Um, but it's sort of just like a bit of a spoiler. You'll, you'll learn about that later on. I just want you to note it now. Okay. By the way, it's stationary with an A as opposed to stationary with an E, which is this kind of stuff. Okay. That was the second thing. Um, the third thing I'd like you to notice is see these curves here. How I've got two of them, right? What's really important is that these curves are not semicircles. They are not semicircles. Right? So I've seen lots of people who graph and it looks kind of like, well, here's my bad graph, I'll get rid of it and I'll replace it with another bad graph. Here we go. These two halves, they kind of look like, well, here's one and then here's the other. Okay, so kind of what it looks like. Now, honestly, you can do worse than this, right? Like that blurry thing I showed you before, that's not very good. This is a little, little cleaner, at least. But can you see a semicircle, right? At these points in here, it's exactly vertical, right? exactly vertical. But do you remember that very first task when I said over here, uh, here's this enormous set of axes and I asked you guys to give me points and we drew it, right? It doesn't do this vertical thing. It doesn't do it there, it doesn't do it here. It sort of increases at this gentle rate. Again, if you want to picture a roller coaster, okay? Roller coasters are gonna do this kind of thing, unless you're at that one that just goes straight up and down. It is, there's no vertical parts to it, okay? So they're not semicircles. Right, fourthly, um, again, another important word I'm going to introduce to you. This graph is what we call periodic. Periodic. Now, what that means is, like, you guys know what um, it means when you say something's periodic. It's like, okay, this happens regularly, right? Now, why does this happen? Remember the unit circle, okay? Where we got all of these values from was from reading for sine. It was from reading the y-coordinates, like how high up and down am I on the circle? 
okay? And you start at zero, and then you go all the way around 90, 180, 270, and then you wind back at 360, okay? Now, if I kept going, 360, 370, 380, 390, 450, blah, 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 blah. You're going around the same circle, right? So you're gonna get the same values again and again and again. They repeat, okay? So on your graph, like all I've drawn is north to 360, but in fact, it continues. It continues in both directions forever, okay? Uh, that's what we mean by it's periodic, it's repetitive, and it repeats every 360 degrees, because that's how many degrees there are in a circle. Okay. So it's periodic every 360 degrees. Okay. One more thing to note, uh, our last point here. Can you see, right? Because it repeats and it just goes up and down and up and down. By the way, we have another word for that. It, um, it oscillates, kind of like a, um, like a pendulum or high or low tide or the, the height of the sun in the air. Uh, in the sky rather, as the seasons progress. It oscillates up and down, so therefore it always stays within this kind of range, right? It never goes higher and it never goes lower. Unlike say y equals x squared, it just goes up forever, right? There's no point where you can say, ah, oh, there's the ceiling of y equals x squared and it stops. Here, you're in this narrow space, okay? So this narrow space we call the range, the range. Okay. Now, range is an up-down word. Okay, it's about vertical things, and the vertical axis is y. Okay, so we say it stays between negative one and one. That's what the y values do. Okay, so rather than saying, because that's a bit long and awkward to say, the y values always stay between negative one and one. Mathematicians write this using symbols to make it faster. Okay. This is our notation to say y, right? It's always got to be greater than or equal to negative 1. It's always above that. But at the same time, it's always less than or equal to positive 1, right? It's above negative 1, it's below positive 1. And that's the way we kind of tie that up in a neat bow, right? So these are a few things to know about this sine curve.